Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. Larry Kreider here. With me in the studio today is Janet Souter. Welcome, Janet. Thank you. Good to be here, Larry. This is going to be fun. I've known you for a long, long time. We grew up in the same church, I mean, many years ago for me. And that's so long for you. You're a lot younger than I am. <laughs> but uh, you've got a lot that you've learned about leadership that I want to ask you questions about. And let's get down to it, Janet. Are you ready? I'm ready, Larry. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to just talk about way back. What was it like growing up? I mean, you've had a pretty amazing testimony. I love your testimony. And talk about how you came to Christ. What was the process that happened over that time? Well, I grew up in a, a conservative church. So when you became a Christian, there were certain things you had to do. Right. Like you were covering, you got baptized, you uh, became a member of the church. And I remember I was like five years old and I was at my grandma's house overnight. And I told my grandma, I said, I want to become a Christian. I want to pray. And in great grandma wisdom, she, at the moment, told me, she goes, well, I think that's something you should talk to your parents about. And so I didn't for five years because I was like, scared? I was kind of counting the cost because okay. I knew what would happen. I knew that it meant all these things. In that tradition. In the tradition. Mm -hmm. And so it, for five years, I wanted to, but I was just thinking about it because I knew that it meant change. It meant like you're taking a stand and you may kind of, you know, it was public. So I waited till I was 10 and then I told my parents that I would like to pray. And I think we prayed at home, but then we also would have made a public confession at church. Right. And afterwards, they kind of like the ministers pray for you. And I remember my mom saying that sometimes when you, you know, become a Christian, that they cry. And I'm like, I wasn't a big crier. So right. I was like, oh, that was, was kind of interesting. Well, when they prayed for me, I just cried and cried, wow. just bawled my eyes out. And I was just like more embarrassed because I was crying, but not understanding that it was like a touch of the Holy Spirit. Boy, you had a true conversion. That is amazing. So that happened back when you were 10. And I know today you're involved in all kinds of leadership. I mean, you work in the medical field, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, you're involved in the, in the Dove International Apostolic Council, where you give leadership to people throughout the world. Uh, you're an elder in your local church. <laughs> Just a few of the many, many things you've done. You are a missionary, youth ministry. What happened next? Like, when you were back in those days, 10 years of age, 10, 12, 15, whatever, did you ever think you'd be involved in leadership the way you are today? Not at all. Not at I all. I mean, I never— I didn't have the scope to think that far out. Right. But my parents would go to Southern Gospel Sings, and I would okay. hear the singers talk about Jesus, and they would give testimonies. Right. And there was something that just really connected in a hunger. It fed a hunger within me. And so it also let me know that you can be a Christian and not have to look a certain way or fit right. a certain mold. And so there was just that hunger that mm. I just wanted more of Jesus. And um, I was probably, well, I was 15 when I heard about this Bible study and someone gave me an invitation to Raymond Youth Ministries to uh, to come to a Bible study. And I was like, yes, that's what I've been waiting for. And as soon as I got my license, I would go like every week and I would take people with me and I would just, um, it just fed me. You know, it was fed the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sure. Oh, this is funny. I got baptized at a singles retreat and I was like, there was, gonna, there was a singles retreat happening and I was like, I'm single. You know, I might be 16, but I'm <laughs> single. So I went to this singles retreat and got baptized in the Holy Spirit there. So in those early days, you had such a hunger for God. And what, what are some of the first leadership things that you remember that you would have gotten involved in? Well, back at my church, um, I would have been treasurer of the youth group. And then when I got involved in Rema, I became part of, there was a ministry at Poplar Grove, which I think you helped to start. Right. Way and back. we would go... Papa Grove is a little community in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, reaching kids for Jesus. Go ahead. Yeah, so we would go like every week and have like a Bible... Bible study for kids. Bible study for kids, yeah. you know, of course, something to eat and something to something fun. 
And we I did that for a couple of years. We had the five to eight year olds. And also fun uh, part of that story is one of the younger brothers ended up being the craftsman that worked on our house really? when we built a house 10 years ago. Wow, that is amazing. So back, you mentioned Rhema Bible Studies. I mean, Rhema Youth Ministries obviously was, it was part of a youth revival. It was during the Jesus Movement. And for those who've never heard of that, you're listening, uh, you know, a few people joined me and we started this Bible study and it grew to hundreds of people and really thousands of young people came through that over those four or five, six years, whatever it was during that time. And so you came to that. But then tell us about your mission experience. I remember you were young. I remember you were sent to the mission field. Yeah, I was. I wanted to go to on a mission team because I had some friends that went on a mission team after high school, and right. so it just planted a seed. Like so many things do, it plants a seed in your heart, and then you just can't get away from it. Sure. So they so they were a year older than me, and they had gone on a mission team, and I was like, that would be like really cool to go on a mission team after I graduate. So I started kind of like getting information about different places, and I'd even fill out an application, and then I'd be like, no, I don't have. I just wouldn't send it. And then one night at Rema, I heard about a mission team to Scotland. It was going to be for six weeks, and it was right after I graduated. And I was like, yep, that's it. I'm going to go. And I told a friend of mine who then broke the news to my parents. Oh, no. <laughs> they didn't hear from you. No. Oh, my goodness. But it was like it was okay because sometimes you needed extra help to kind of get the word out. So that was my first um, mission team. It was great. It was six weeks long. I remember the team because I remember it for you a, came, maybe yeah, a you week ca- or two during that time. I came, we did a rock and roll seminar. And, yeah, you and, came. Uh, and came with our friend, mutual friend Jerry Horse, I remember. And yeah. So we were in central Scotland, and then one week we went up to... Um, Peterhead, Scotland, right, and Scotland. it was pretty much a work team, and then we would go in and do some street evangelism in the evenings, and um, I remember doing some clown ministry, and it was it, it was life-changing, wow. and I remember during that time, you had come over, and you said you really felt like we're... Scotland. I remember the place I stood, a place called Creef. Oh, yeah. And I remember that's... I was praying one morning, and, and I mean, I was a pastor of this new church, and mm-hmm. I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said... God's going to use this new church, this Dove Church, to plant a church in Scotland. Blew my mind. And, and then I, you became part of that church planting yeah. team, right? Well, you kind of shoulder tapped me and said, hey, we're going to plant a church. And he goes, you should pray about being did part I really? of it. <laughs> so that's another was big... Was that a good thing? Are you glad Oh, that was that? a good thing, yeah, because I was like not thinking of coming back and planting a church. I mean, I was going on a six-week week sure. mission team, and then I was going home. But it totally changed the trajectory of my life. Right. And... In a good way. Of course. You know, it just was like it kind of broke out of like your comfortable mold and what you're yeah, thinking. Yeah. So, yeah, it totally changed. And then a year and a half later, I went back. That's amazing. So, how long were you in Scotland then? I lived back? in Scotland for a year and a half. A year and a half. We reached out there. to the kids in the town and saw a whole bunch of them getting saved and baptized and, um, I remember Jan Linda Good led that team and mm-hmm. led the way, and he was like the first pastor of that church. And we came in, I remember Laverne and I and our kids, our children came there for like six weeks or something, one summer to help. And But, you know, we all learned so much. And in those days, we were this little church in Pennsylvania that planted a church. Right. And we learned so much through that, things to do and not to do, you know, to help us in church planting around the world where we're at, you know, today, 1,100 plus churches around the world. We learned back in those days in Scotland. And you were just a key part of that. One thing I really love is being able to see the connection like years later. And that church is not a church it's anymore. It's not in existence today, right. But the relationships are still there. Right. Um, right before COVID, the year before COVID, a friend of mine who was with me, right. we took a trip back and went on a, like a road tour and went and visited a lot, oh, of people, huh? a lot of people that we had both known from way back when yeah, we came at the church. Yeah, that is so cool. Now, let, let's talk. I mean, you're involved in the medical field today. You know, as I said, you're involved in you know apostolic church leadership, overseeing church in South Africa and different parts of the world. Talk to me about what you learned about teamwork. I know teamwork is something that's really close to your heart and it's so important for leadership. Can we talk about how did you learn about teamwork? I do. I love teamwork. I think it became more... Um, obvious to me as time went on, Mm -hmm. but I think maybe in youth ministry, um, when I first got, when we got married, Brian and I got married, um, he was a youth pastor. And so we would have our leader, like our team, we get together and we would brainstorm and we would Mm. like, oh, they were so much fun. They were chaotic, but they were so much fun because we were building a team 
and hearing people's ideas and yeah. feeding ideas and talking about something and kind of watching something be created. Right. which wasn't from one person. It was a mm-hmm. collaboration of the whole love team. It, love it. And yet there was a clear leader. Mm-hmm. And when we led the youth, we led the youth at our local church for probably about 16, 17 years. Wow. And I would get an idea sometimes, and then when you kind of feel the idea and you watch other people jump on board, but they you do it when it's like still like kind of wet cement. And they kind of give their idea with it, and they kind of get invested into it, and it mm-hmm. ends up being much better, bigger than what your original idea yeah, was. Rather than my idea, it's our idea. It's our idea. Yeah. So they're invested right. into it. That's and powerful. It is so much fun. Yeah. And then also just watching for giftings, you know, watching for, oh, this person likes to play the guitar and they like to lead worship. And um, this person is really good at, you know, just they don't want to be up front, but they're great at gathering all right. this stuff together. Right. So that was just part of... Um, I know you've preached on fields of ministry, Mm -hmm. you know, or you can use a swimming analogy, stay in your lane. Right. But it is so incredible um, to know who is the leader and how to help. Yeah, and why is leadership? We'll draw out from other people what's, you know, their ideas and these guys saying, it, to them and through them. So then together we have this this vision, this dream. Because I mean, I've had lots of visions already, but I just had one little piece of it. Right. When you bring other people into it, then you see the power that's released in teamwork because we don't want everyone like us. We want people different than us, right? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Talk about how you learn teamwork in the medical field. Well, I'm a surge tech, so I work in the operating room, and I have one piece of what needs to happen for the day. So we get assigned, and we don't get to pick our team, but we get assigned to an OR or two different cases. And my job is one piece of that. But Mm -hmm. there's a nurse, and she has another piece. You have, you know, a surgeon, and you have the anesthesia, and you have um, the CRNA, and you have all these different people that each one knows what they're supposed to do. And it will flow really well when everybody stays in their area. In their field. In their field. (laughs) And you can help each other, but, you know... I have my table to set up, and I set it up how I want to set it up. I mean, yes, I've been trained, and I will look at my coworkers and get ideas from them and how to tweak it, but I need to know what's on my table and where it is. So Mm. when I need to reach for it, I know exactly where it's at. So it is – we do – lunch relief or give people breaks. Sure. And sometimes somebody else will set up your table, and then you come in and you work off of it, and it's – you kind of have to get acclimated because it's not quite the same. Right. But then you just make it your own and you can flow from sure. there. Sure. Um, so we have some, you know, s- standards or some kind of similarities. But it doesn't work if somebody comes over and tries to, that doesn't even know my job. Right. And starts telling me where to put things. No matter how smart they are in their own field. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 So good, so good. I know a life message for you, Janet, also has been, I mean, you've been involved in so much leadership. I've known you for so many years, Laverne, and I have appreciated you, you and Brian so much, worked together. I mean, man, how many years? Close to 40 years. I mean, it's crazy. So a real life message for you is just don't quit. Right. Talk about that. That is definitely um, kind of all the way through. But I was in Scotland one day, and as you do, some days you have a, day, a low day or you just yeah. kind of are feeling kind of sad. And I remember going in and just having some quiet time in this room and I was just praying and I felt like, you know what? I can't quit because the cost to quit is bigger than the cost to continue. Wow. Say that again. The cost to quit is bigger than the cost to continue, even on a hard day. Mm. Because if I quit, all the people that I've told things to, all the people that I've told them, you know, that this is what it's like to serve God or this is, you know what it's like to have a relationship with Jesus, are going to be like, what was she talking about? Right, you know? exactly. Um, the chance of having, you know, not working with God, you know, for a marriage, for children, for um, relationships, you know, and just the cost of potentially seeing brokenness, you know, being it's true. Um, in different areas. So that was like huge. I just remember that the cost to quit is bigger than the cost to continue. Wow, that's amazing. And I was like, okay, God. I guess that settles it. We're not quitting. And um, and also somewhere along the line, too, it's just like, you know what, God, if you ask me to do something, I'll say yes. And I don't know that I've been perfect in that, but that's been sure. a foundation um, that 
was kind of established back when I was probably like in my teens. Mm. Well, honestly, I forgot that I tapped you on the shoulder years ago, but I'm really glad I did. <laughs> because God has used you so much in so many different parts of the world, used you in the Dev Global family, and you've had, you know, you and Brian have such, such a, a history with all of us. And uh, you're true team players, I've seen that again and again and again. And um, so I also want to ask you about things you've learned as a leader, things that have, other things that have helped you. For example, I know you, you mentioned once that uh, it's really important to have spiritual moms and, and, you know, people that will mentor us and help us. Talk to us about that. How does that work for you? And how have you been a mentor? Have you been mentored? What's that look like? Well, I have to give a shout out to Laverne, your lovely wife. My Laverne. Wa- your Laverne, your lovely wife, who is just a living example of that, she and as she has just prayed for me faithfully for many years, and just so well. coming alongside of mm-hmm. um, and asking, like you know, what's God telling you, and mm-hmm. what is you know, what are your struggles? Kind of a safe place, just to like let's pray, let's commit that to the Lord, mm-hmm. and so in turn, I've wanted to do that to other people, right? And you know, I have people that I meet or call with regular, and just. Um, Again, just hear their heart, hear where they're at, and not so much tell them what to do, but listen to what they feel like God is telling them to do. Right. And exactly. then encourage them That's to, so to follow through. Yeah. Yeah. And don't quit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So often we feel like we got to tell people what they should do rather than saying, you pray, what's in your heart, and then how can I get behind you? And that way there's there's divine energy for that to happen because it's something God's shown them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in their hearts. Janet, lots of, we have lots of younger leaders who listen to this podcast, and I mean all ages, obviously, from all over the world. And uh, if, if someone was to tap you on the shoulder today and say, Janet, what are some things I need to be aware of as I start my leadership journey? What are some things that you know I need to make sure that I'm beginning to look at and flesh out? What would you say? Well, I think there's definitely a challenge now with texting and emails that it's constant. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't feel like you have a chance to think through Mm -hmm. before you're like asked for an answer. And so I would probably say it's not a rush. Mm -hmm. You know, take the time. Give yourself a um, time to answer or give yourself time to think about something before you feel like you have to. That would be, I feel, like, I feel like that's a downfall because everything is like instant. You kind right. of want to give an answer quickly. And it's also then a constant thing on you, you know, that you're entertaining. Mm-hmm. So kind of back up and maybe kind of have some boundaries there as far as I don't have to answer this right now. The other thing would be is follow through. Mm-hmm. You know, like once you say something, um, I know for youth ministry, we were like, once we put things out there, Brian and I, or even life group, you know, like a small mm-hmm. group sure. is like, don't cancel, right? don't change it. Uh, and, and that's one of the things over the years we've learned because we've, you know, we've done it. And that's right, like the right. night somebody has called or somebody showed up and I wanted to come and you're like, oh, we canceled, you know? So those would be some of the things for young leaders is don't change the plans. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want people on your team, then you have to stick with the plan Mm -hmm. um, and change it after maybe something's done. But yeah, I I feel for people, you know, with just so much availability or... Right. um, It's different today. It's a lot different today than 20, 30, 40 years ago. And you've got to be sharp and, and you need to think through things, take time, pray through things. And because you're right. People can get us texting and get us moment by moment so so, so quickly. Uh, have you made any mistakes, Janet? Yeah, one or two, <laughs> one or two or more. If, if you look, if you look <laughs> back, what would have, you know? Are some things you would change, or mistakes you made, things you would have changed? Talk to me about that. I think just to realize that it's probably not that big, and roll with it. Like uh-huh. let it go. You know you attempt something, you say something wrong, just come back in humility and apologize. Right, right. But I remember sometimes pulling something together and, you know, you're giving people a chance to kind of serve with you and Mm -hmm. it they don't follow through or you don't follow through quite and it just fell flat Mm -hmm. and just to let it go. Yeah. It like it's okay. All things work together for good to those who love God, even the crazy, stupid things we do. Right. If we trust God, even that can be used for his good. Yeah. So I think that's 
just come back with humility. Okay. Um, and just roll with it. Okay. Roll with it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, anything else you would like our listeners to know today about leadership? Anything else you think? This is something I learned, maybe learned the hard way. What I like to do is let others know, you, if I may, if I learn the hard way in something, you don't have to. I'm going to tell you. You can still you know, go through it and learn the hard way, but you don't have to if I can share with you the things that I've learned the hard way. Anything, anything you want to share about well, that? Well, one of the things I love that you have said over the years is look for someone to replace yourself. Yes. You know, so if you're doing something, right. look for someone else to bring alongside of yeah. you and replace yourself. So I think about that when we worked with the youth mm-hmm. and the teens, like what am I doing that they could do it? And interesting enough, they always want to do the fun part. <laughs> True. <laughs> and it's okay, like let them, you know, but it, it is a letting go because you kind of want to do that fun part too. Right. And you find yourself, you know, sweeping up at the end of the night or emptying the trash and some of the, the fun part, you know, they did. But it's okay. So look for people that... Have look for their, you know, look for the quiet people too, because right, they also good. have huge gems to offer and to participate. They're not going to do maybe the, some of the more glamorous stuff, but they are like so valuable. Like, I really believe that everybody has something to contribute. So, look for someone to replace yourself, look for someone that you can encourage and bring alongside. And for a simple analogy, if you're making chocolate chip cookies, let them dump the chocolate chips in because that's... There you go. And let them taste the warm cookies afterwards. Right. I like this practicality. It's so, so good. Uh, by the way, check out the show notes today. Uh, you want to know more about Dove International? You know, we've talked a lot about uh, church planning and some of the things that, Janet, you've been involved in over the years. And uh, in fact, did you, how did, did you meet Brian on a mission team? Or how did that work? I would have met him at Rima Youth Ministries. Okay. And then he was leading the high school ministries. Yes. And so I was helping with one of the high school uh, as far as leadership. I graduated, so I turned right around the next fall and started helping with a high school ministry at one of the local high schools. Right. And he was kind of overseeing and pulling that all together. Okay. And it would have been before I went to Scotland. I hosted a chicken barbecue at my parents' house, and for different of the schools came together. Okay. And he said that's when he first really noticed me. Oh, he was wow. like, wow, this actually worked. This was like, you know, this was fun. Yeah. And he's like, who planned this? And someone told him that I did. So plan a party and find your husband. That, that's right. <laughs> I left. I had no idea. I left for a year and a half, and he sat on that. <laughs> so he, he, he waited a year and a half that you came back yeah. to pursue the relationship. That is so intriguing. So, yep, I can probably get to the chicken barbecue recipe. <laughs> that, that is that is great. Well, back to the show. Back to the show notes. Um, Janet, you wrote this amazing article. Don't quit. Loved it. And so you can find out more about Janet, more about Devon and Astral there on the show notes today. Any last minute gems you have for us before we close out today, uh, Janet? Anything else you say? I wish you would have said that. Here's your chance. I think, looking back, leadership. Um, I know one of the things you asked is what I learned in leadership, and it's right. pretty much a servant role. Yeah. Look who you can help encourage and to do what you're doing. That's a servant role. It's really, Jesus' leadership is servant leadership. You're right. And uh, that's, the, I mean, that, that's so important to understand because many people think top-down leadership. It's, it's not. It's getting under people and pushing them up to the Lord. Janet Souter, thank you so much today. This is so good. So everyone, check out the show notes and you can find out more about leadership. And uh, Janet Souter, thank you for the way you and your, your husband, Brian, have served so many years. And, and you guys have been a phenomenal blessing. So thank you. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Certainly. Everyone, so glad you joined us today. Remember, again, we heard to hear these stories behind the stories. I learned some things today that I didn't know about Janet. It was great. Hear these stories behind the stories as to how we can be the leaders, the servant leaders God's called us to be. So check us out online and look forward to seeing you back here next week. God bless. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com. 